Transport Evolved is sponsored by AudiblePodcast.com. To claim your free audiobook from a selection of over 85,000 growing titles for your iPod or MP3 player, head to www.audiblepodcast.com forward slash Transport Evolved. And by your kind donations. To make a gift to the show or to set up a monthly subscription, head to www.transportevolved.com. We thank you for your kind support. And proud to support Chronovirus, the latest book by Long Island author Aaron Crocker. To find out more and get a free chapter, head to www.aaroncrocco.com. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to episode number 171 of Transport Evolved, published on October 27th, we think, uh, yes. 2013. My name is Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. And I'm Mark Chatterley. Hello. Hello, Mark. How are you today? I'm good. I'm on the wrong side of you again. I know, uh, I know. But don't look that way because the person we're just overtaking with the DIY manure truck might think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm random. And I'm, I'm, not in, I'm not in a little box. I quite like having more freedom. And why did it say DIY manure? I mean, surely that's. Ew. <laughs> Ew, that's a bit weird. I know. Maybe I misread it? I'm hoping you did. I'm sure it did say DIY <laughs> It's a very odd start to an episode. Okay, so we are driving in a Volt. Yeah, it's a lovely, uh, I've never been in a Volt before. We've never been in a Volt. This is my wife's Chevy Volt, it's back. Um, I, if I look slightly distracted, it's because I'm driving. Yeah. And uh, we don't want this car to have another accident, um, obviously. Uh, and we're coming up on 50 miles out of London. Yeah. We are driving. It's a... What day of the week are we? Is it Wednesday today? No, it's Thursday today. Oh, well, that's good. It is good. <laughs> it is later in the week than I thought. Okay, so Thursday. It's been a mad, hectic, weird week in the Transport Evolved family. Uh, so that's why I kind of lost track of where we were. Uh, apologies for the bad filming. That's because the sun is right over my shoulder. Uh, but obviously, we're facing away from the sun. Uh, the sun's setting in the west and we're driving east, so kind of you're stuck with this. Um, and we're on our way where, Mark? We are on our way to the official opening of the new UK Tesla store. Which At Westfield Mall. West, Westfield Mall. Mall? Mall? Mall. Mall. In, yeah. in, in London, which is very, very exciting. Yeah, I went to the original Tesla store opening way back in... Oh, it would have been 2000 and, I want to say 2010, but I think it was actually 2009. And then that was the store that closed once, essentially, they'd run out of roadsters of to roadsters sell. Of roadsters to sell, yeah. And um, London has obviously kept its service centre, but now uh, London is going to get its very own Tesla store, which would be like the uh, like the Tesla stores all around the rest of the world. Yeah. Um, it will be a retail store in a shopping centre. Yeah. And we don't need to worry about any silly, strange laws about not being able to sell no. directly to customers. It's um, very cool. It is it's exceedingly cool. In fact, actually, that's one of the stories we're going to talk about today, is Tesla stores and how <laughs> in Texas they have to circumnavigate things <laughs> in an astonishingly bizarre way, um, which is, you know, crazy, really just crazy, absolutely crazy stuff. Um, but um, with what, 48 minutes to go until we reach our destination? Yeah. We thought we'd run down some of the stories of the week. Yes. Now, forgive us if we miss some stories out. You have to bear in mind this is a Thursday and the show doesn't normally go out until a Sunday. We're not going to have a live show this week and hopefully, it is my hope, that we get this version of the show up on the website, live, by the time, those of you who normally tune in at 7pm on a Sunday, so uh, there'll be something for, so you, be to something watch. for you to watch. Yeah. And unfortunately, maybe we'll I, in the chat room. I won't be around to be in the chat room, unfortunately. No, you're off doing other stuff. I'm off doing other which stuff. Which is the other reason why we're doing it now. Yeah. We thought we'd combine two things in one go. Anyway, right, on to the week's news. We've been looking at our script for, tom- for, for Friday's TEN. Yeah. Uh, and we're recording this show the wrong way around. So we're recording this before we record 10. Which is, yeah, it's slightly weird for us now. So, any breaking news stories between now and Sunday won't be in show. Sorry. Unless we could invent time travel. 
I'll work on it. I'll get we'll to work, work on, on it. it. We'll work on it. All right. So the first big story of the week does involve Tesla. It does. Um, Munich this week. Earlier this week, uh, Elon Musk was there uh, doing an event at the Munich Service Center to all his Tesla fans, and he came up. Uh, he announced something. Two very exciting things. Yeah. I, I, the first one's very exciting. The second one's kind of incidental because of the way things work in Europe. But the first one being, and I'm guessing it came about, Elon Musk was driving on the Autobahn through Germany in, mm -hmm. in a Model S and yeah. enjoying it. And I think while doing it, realizing that the Autobahn doesn't have a speed limit. Actually, it does. Most of the Autobahn well, does. Most of it does. Um, only a tiny, only a few tiny okay. sections now Don't have, have it. de restriction. Um, and they have what they call, uh, my German is rubbish, so I'm not going to say it in German, but it's effectively a suggested maximum speed <laughs> yeah. of 130 kilometers an hour. But there isn't in certain sections a top speed. And no. Elon realized that some people may want to be driving as fast as the Model S will allow them to. Which is about 200 and some k pH. Yeah, which is about 130, 135 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And realized that they never really engineered the Model S and tuned it for those circumstances. Right. Because it's a circumstance that if you ever hit those speeds in the UK or in the US, you're breaking a fair few laws or yeah. you're on a track. Yeah. And, and in doing so, realized that in Germany, people might want to travel like this more often and turned around and basically said, anyone who's bought a Model S in Germany so far or will be buying a Model S in Germany can just bring it into a dealer and get a free tune-up for high-speed driving. Yeah, if you want, and his exact words were, if you're the kind of person who likes to drive at the limit, yeah, um, you know, whether you've bought one already, you got one on order, or you're just about to reserve one, let us know, and we will make sure that a, a car, uh, our top engineers can tune the car. And he's actually sending his top engineering team over from California to Germany to ensure that these cars will run really sweet, as he says, <laughs> or, or really, really smooth. Um, now, the nomenclature here, and I don't think we'll know this until later uh, when we're at the Tesla store, but the nomenclature here is very, uh, is very unclear. I'm not sure if Tesla is offering to de-restrict the Model S so it will go faster, or if it's just offering a suspension and handling tune-up, and I suspect yeah. it's the latter. And, and the interesting question that came into mind when I was discussing this with, with my friends this week is, will that become an option on the dash? Mm. If none of it is mechanical changes, if it is software changes and tweaks, which the way the Model S works, it could be. It could be even be an over-the-air update. It could, yeah, become an over-the-air the update for all of Europe. You press a button and your car morphs, like the red button in Men in Black. <laughs> you mean, you go, <laughs> press the red button. And off you go, upside down and down the autobahn. I, I just think it's awesome. It, it's an example of, of a CEO of a company going, our product doesn't quite operate perfectly in this situation. They're admitting a fault, or maybe not a fault, but admitting that they could have done better in a certain circumstance, and yeah. then going, we're going to fix that for free. Yeah. I, I just, that's amazing. The other thing that I think is, is, is pretty cool is that uh, Tesla has acknowledged that, that people enjoy driving the Model S yeah. at, at, as fast as they may be allowed to because it's the first production electric car on the market where it's got a big enough range that you can drive it for a hundred miles at, at high speed yeah. without, as long as it's obviously safe and legal to do so. Um, one of the things that I want to tackle here is we, we were one of the first outlets to publish the story this week. Yes. And we got reddited. Da, 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 we get reddited. We got which yes. was brilliant because our, our, our we got I think over to coming up to ten thousand hits that day. Yeah. Which is not bad. That's the best we've ever had. Um, and and one person did comment on the Reddit stream. I don't understand why anybody would want to drive that fast. It's dangerous, etc., etc. And several people came on and commented that that in Germany the driving test is really tough you know to be able to get the license that enables you to drive on the autobahns and the unrestricted part of the autobahn they really do put you through your paces same here in the UK I mean our driving test oh there's uh, so is, many parts of the driving test now <laughs> is, is insane and I was talking actually to Michael Thwaite last week um, 
uh, last Saturday. Uh, those of you who watch the show know regularly will know Michael. He's an expat living in uh, New Jersey. And he's got four electric cars. Um, his daughter learned to drive an electric car. And his son has just passed his test driving the Mitsubishi I that they have in the family. Excellent. Um, and Michael was sort of saying, well, I'm glad he's passed, but the driving tests here are so simple compared to what we had to do in the, in the UK. I, I always remember when I was growing up watching sort of American kids TV, they would take driving classes as part of school. Yes. It was just like an hour less in school, which always back my mind. I mean, when I did my driving test, when I was, I didn't do my driving test until I was 20. Five miles ahead on the route. Road work, six miles long. Thank you. Thank you. You hear that the Chevy Volt yeah. has a British accent in Europe. Carry on. Um, when, when I did my test when I was about 20, 21, something around that, I, I didn't need to learn to drive, so I didn't. I, I learned to drive when I needed to. I had to do um, uh, my theory test, which is basically a multiple choice test about what do these signs do, what do you do at this type of junction, what does this mean. I then had to do a hazard awareness test, mm -hmm. where you sit in front of a monitor which shows someone driving a course from a first person point of view, and you need to click on all the possible hazards. And with that test is quite interesting, because if you click too many hazards, you are you fail. Nice. So you can't be over cautious and mm -hmm. you can't be under cautious. And then you then have the practical test, which is when you actually go out yep. for about half an hour, 45 minutes, mm -hmm. driving around in a variety of conditions. And and then when that gives you your license, but after that you're strongly advised to do the pass plus test. Mm -hmm. which Did you do that? I didn't. I didn't do that because I had no money at the time. <laughs> but that, that teaches you motorway driving yeah. and, and additional sort of safety driving and a bit of eco driving at the time I think it did. And, and in Germany obviously the test is even, more, is even yeah. more stringent. I mean I didn't, I passed my driving test in 2003 because like you, I went to university somewhere where I didn't need to drive. Yeah. So I didn't pass my driving test until I'd, I'd actually already got a job and I was cycling 50 miles a day. I got the job and they said, uh, is there anything you need to tell us? And it was a job which involved the requirement to travel round in a peripatetic situation. Is there anything you need to tell us? Well, I don't have a driving license yet. <laughs> Are you going to get one before you start the job? Oh yes, absolutely. I failed my test oh. three times. Passed on the fourth attempt, but by which point I'd been working for two months in this. Okay. So I was, I was, I was fit. I was cycling 50 miles a day, yeah. pulling a trailer full of, of musical instruments. That's a really weird, weird rat run, isn't it? Yeah, it is a bit of a rat. Tennis saxophone, bassoon, <laughs> oboe, clarinet, <laughs> alto, a change of clothes, and actually the trailer plus the bike was longer than the Vauxhall Corsa that I got given. I got given, <laughs> sorry, that's bad, that's bad grammar. The Vauxhall Corsa I was, I was given by the, uh, by the, the, the music service, by my boss when I, when I passed. So actually my bike was longer than the car, which is insane. Anyway, so, so, yeah, no, back to Germany, back to Tesla, back to the superchargers. Ah, oh, the supercharger story, I love this. So, so we, we've talked about it before, how the Model S in Europe has three phase charging, uh, rather than in the US where it's just single phase. So in Europe, the car can charge 11 kilowatts three phase, mm -hmm. rather than in the US where it charges at 10 kilowatts single phase. Yep. So there's an extra one kilowatt there. Now when you realize that superchargers are essentially stacked normal chargers, mm -hmm. it gives us faster supercharging yes. than America. We get 135 kilowatt supercharging rather than 120. 120. Yeah. Which, so, so we yeah. have the three phase 11 kilowatts versus the 10, the 10 kilowatt single phase yeah. in the States. Now someone's done the math and they've gone, oh I'm actually, it's 134.2 or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, we're, Elon's rounded it up, 135. I, I really think that, that sort of, distant difference is not that great. It, it, I mean, it shortens charging by... It's about a 12.5% increase, I oh, think, okay. I worked it out as. So, I mean, even if you said that's 10%, it, yes, 10% faster charging is brilliant. And, and this is just because of the wonder of three-phase charging, which the Model S almost didn't have in Europe. Mm -hmm. And it was only because the Tesla community kind and of came together and, and pushed for it. And I think we should probably note that Tesla actually does listen yeah. to 
to its customers. Very, very much so. Tesla listens to its customers, or has se seemingly done so. I mean, it's something we'll talk about later on. Um, I'm just looking down here. I hope my microphone's recording properly. We're, uh, uh, I have to concentrate on driving now, unfortunately. Rush hour. I don't know. No one can see this, but but on, <laughs> on the, the other side, of on the, the other way. side of the freeway, we're going into London while everybody else is going out. And wow. Yeah. It's like a, a half mile tailback for uh, for this junction here, for this off ramp. Incredible. All right. So uh, the other thing about superchargers was Musk said on uh, Tuesday night in um, Munich that not only would um, not only would we get uh, you know faster chargers in Europe, but that Germany would get fully covered by superchargers by the end of next year. Yeah. A hundred percent of the population would be within range of a supercharger. And, and I think he's realized, so in, in Europe he's using a modified version of what we call a type two socket. Right. So the yeah. type two socket in, in Europe is our, our standard for AC charging because it can do single phase, three phase AC charging. It can actually do DC charging, although for some reason we still have the CCS standard which adds two extra pins which aren't really needed, but that's a bit of a rat run. But Tesla took that connector and made a few changes to yeah. it, so now it can take 135 kilowatts DC. And I think Elon's making a very clever play that he's taken the existing standard, improved upon it significantly, and if he rolls out a decent charging network across Europe and across the UK, which is part of Europe, sorry, um, if he does that, that connector becomes the standard. It, it is the best connector, and it will surely have to be adopted as the well, standard. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the challenge here, of course, is that, that, that the other automakers, because on the, how that connector works is, you know, on, on most cars, you've got your AC, whether it's yeah. single phase or three phase, and then if you have a direct current, you have separate pins, a sep either a separate part of the connector or a separate connector completely lies it as in the Chadamo standard. And what Tesla's done is it uses the same pins for AC three phase as it does for DC. It just relies on the car yeah. to switch. To know what to do. To switch that, that, that current flow from directly to the charger to directly to the battery pack. Um, so I think you know adopting that standard might be a little bit harder than we'd like, but I agree with you. I think I think it would be nice to see that standard adopted. Um, but it is great news from Germany. Um, it does promise uh, good things for the UK. Uh, this week, talking about the UK, um, there was an announcement of a new supercharging network, well not supercharging, a new charging network for EVs, rapid charging. And it's a consortium between uh, Nissan yeah. and BMW and Renault and I think a couple of other people and it's three different standards of charging so yeah. triple standard charging stations the thing I've got the beef with here is it links Stranra which is a, a southwest Scottish um, port with okay. Felixstowe which is a south east UK port okay across the country it winds down from Stranra down, uh, takes in a little bit of, of Liverpool, goes past Liverpool, I think takes in some, a little bit of north, northeastern Wales, yeah. then kind of in winds its way across. Air right, onto the M4 towards London. Thank you. Thank you, lady. Um, it does also incorporate a little bit of um, Birmingham, kind of goes round Birmingham and then it goes along the A14 and then off it goes. It doesn't pick up London, it doesn't serve the southwest, it doesn't serve the northeast. Interesting. Northeast uh, has a fairly decent charging network but already. It, it just seems ridiculous that, that another it's another consortium, another yeah. set and of half things. a mile there right onto the M4 towards London. She's very talkative. She's very talkative. We should shut her up a bit. Yeah. I'll figure out how to do that in a bit. Um, so I'm not sure that. Is it going to be another card I have to carry? It will probably have to be another another card you have to but, carry, oh. which is. You know, never very good, really. Um, let me turn off my voice guidance. There we are. The lady will no longer interrupt us. Interrupt us. I, I, yeah, it, it seems I, it, 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 it's positive in the sense that it looks like people are starting to think more about these charging networks. It's yes. not. It's not. We just put them in wherever we can, which it has been before. But if it requires me to have yet another card and. 
<laughs> my worry is, is these charging stations still aren't that reliable. No, they're not. And and we we're seeing new problems now. The 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 Chadamo connect chargers that are out there already. The cables disconnecting from the connector. Yep. The connector levers being broken. They, I don't know whether that's misuse or vandalism or, or just shoddy parts. <laughs> but well, it, it could be any of the above, it could, couldn't it? And it, it worries me that I don't know. I guess I, I I'm more. I would like planning. I, I would rather they looked at the issues, addressed the issues before they started rolling out yet another network where I need yet another card and come across more problems. I don't know. I, maybe I'm just, I, I've been a bit worn out by all of these. Different standards. Yeah, and these charging station announcements, which sound so brilliant when they're announced, but it's happened three or four times now, and I don't know. We'll, we'll suck it and see, I think. Yeah. All right, on to the next piece of news, and then we'll take a break. Um, the BMW i3. Oh, yeah. It's due to go, it's, it's going on sale next month in Germany. It is. BMW, we talked about last week, BMW got more than 8,000 pre-reservations or reservations for the car, so BMW is considering making more. Um, but now, uh, we know how much the car is going to cost in the UK, which is, is interesting. And also, we know a little bit more about the pricing structure, which we can assume will be the same for the US as well. Yeah. So you want to tell us about that, Mark? So th they've gone with a, what I'm calling a Tesla-like approach, yes. which is there are two base cars, which is the battery-only i3, yep. and then there's the range-extended i3, and they have two different prices. The difference between them's about £3,125, if I remember my figures. 3150 3, maybe. Like um, which is a little bit more than was announced in the US if you do conversions, which is... But anyway, um, you, but you take those base models and then you essentially build the car you want. Now, this is possible because BMW is following the let's order this online model. Yeah. Which is, you know, how we ordered our Leafs, but when we ordered our Leafs, we got one option. Do you want the solar panel or not? Yeah, the solar and panel and what, paint? and what colour paint. Yeah, which, <laughs> which isn't really customisation. Um, but, but this is a customisation down to, do you want a heat pump? Do you want a sunroof? Do you want... what? The only thing that seemed to come in packages was the interior styling. Right, okay. And so if you wanted the leather seats and the wooden... Uh, dash, which the was wood the, the yeah. wood veneer, which is the one that they've been showing off. That's two grand extra. But there are various ranges in that, so you can go from the normal upholstery and, and plastic to right. wood and, and leather. But I quite like that approach, and and I think we we we, we talked about it a, a bit before in other videos that the approach Five of going ahead on the route road work three miles. We told long. you not to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like the approach of going, for me, I don't need to drive long distance, so I don't need to worry about DC rapid charging or the range extender. Um, but Or I actually quite like having a sunroof, so I'll do that. Or I'm going to drive distances in the winter, so I'll right. have the heat exchange pump. Yeah. You can make the car that fits your lifestyle. So let's talk about base price. So 30,000, just over 30,000, literally just yeah. over 30,000, before a £5,000 government grant. Yes. So we're talking about 25, 26 grand after government grant for the base model i3, which comes with a 7 kilowatt charger, yep. no DC, no uh, heat exchange pump, so no. just a standard resistive heating element. Yeah, um, um, doesn't have the full uh, sat navy cool funkiness. No connectivity. No connectivity. All right, if you go for the Rex, it's three thousand one hundred fifty pounds more. One hundred fifty-ish more. And we should probably note at this point, you cannot add the Rex as an aftermarket. You have to specify it at point of buy. Yes. But okay, so we went through and we specced, <laughs> we specced kind of a, an all the bells and whistles thing, which is the equivalent of when Apple brings out a new computer and you go to the Apple store and you go, I want all the things. Yeah, and and I uh, is it forty six thousand? Forty six, seven. By which point you're getting into low low spec Model S territory, aren't you? Yeah, or, or what we assume will be mm. that price. Yes, we still don't know that. So it, it can be an expensive car. And, and I, I suppose uh, that is an extreme case, but if you want to take the i3 and make it a 
what in my head is a BMW, which is the leather seats, the heated yes. seats, yes. the parking sensors, the parking assist, all of those things that I associate with BMW, the nicer wheels, because the stock wheels are horrifically horrible. Um, it, you, the price adds up quite quickly. Yes, um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be a little distracted here for a bit because there's something horrible in the road. This is not my car, and I'm trying to figure out how to turn the recirculation so that it doesn't do weird things. Just bear with me. There we go. That's oh, I'm going to do that one, which is recirculate the air, please, because there's a fire yes. somewhere on the road. Sorry about that. It just took me a few seconds to realise. <laughs> but I, I suppose at the end of the day. BMWs are a more luxury brand. You pay for that. You do pay for the BMW name. I'm sorry, I'm smirking because the smell's coming in it the is, car. Ah, uh, oh, that's rancid. And it, <coughs> it still does look nice in person. Okay, so, uh, I mean, I think in terms of pricing, They've done it very carefully. BMW's done it very carefully because um, it's cheaper than the top spec Leaf. Yeah. It's cheaper than the base model Volt. Yeah. But you That's don't necessarily get all the same Yeah, but you bits. Can, nobody cares. You drive up at work and you've got an i3, they don't care if it's the base model or the top of the range, do they? They go, oh, you've got a BMW. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the One Series. I mean, the One Series is same thing you know one series diesel base model diesel one series it's a BMW yeah and if you if you like BMWs and you think there's a a cachet to to, to the name and the badge the name, then go for it okay let's take an audio break let's go and find out what happens when Mr. Aaron Croco has a chronovirus or rather when the ship in chronovirus yes has it encounters a virus. Encounters a okay. virus which affects everybody on board. Okay. Take yeah. it away, Aaron. It was supposed to be just another cargo run, but for Ken Mallory and the three person crew of the Raven, an anomaly in deep space changes everything. An unexpected turbulence shakes the small ship like never before, allowing a deadly virus aboard. One by one, the infected crew is thrown back in time to relive a near-death experience. Only this time, death may be closer than they remember. My short story, Chronovirus, is available for Amazon Kindle, Barnes & Noble Nook, Kobo, iBooks, Sony, and for all other devices and e-readers through Smashwords. Learn more about Chronovirus by visiting my website at www.aaroncroco.com. Hello. Hello. We're back. And the ladies just told us about congestion six miles ahead. So uh, we might then have a bossy lady re-diverting us. But we'll take care of that as and when, yes. won't we? We, we are good like that. Okay, for those of you who've just tuned in, we are on our way to the opening of the Tesla Westfield Mall store. Yes. Big posh mall. Ooh, We're wearing our posh clothes, look. Well, you're wearing posh clothes. I've got, a, I've got a suit jacket in the back of this car. That's what I'm doing for you, Tesla. I'm wearing a suit jacket. Although you've got goop on your jeans. I got goop. I didn't <laughs> realize I had goop on my jeans. All right. So uh, let's talk about another two or three stories and then we will find out what we get up to in London when we get there. So yeah. we'll do our time traveling thing. All right. So uh, moving on with the stories this week, Volkswagen uh, had the XL1 in the UK this week. So upset I missed that. And you were coming out of hospital so you I... didn't have a chance to drive it, but no. I did. On, only because I forwarded on, a, 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 I, I, I clued us in, I'm the one in the know here. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you, you were able to yep. luckily whiz up there at quite short yep. notice. Yes. And... yes, I did. I think yesterday morning I got up at four in the morning so I could go up and drive the XL1. I got to Milton Keynes at nine in the morning, drove the XL1, got back in this car, and then drove back to Bristol to have meetings and work all for the rest of the day. And, um, and the XL1 is, for people who don't know? It is an ultra efficient uh, car, yeah. which started off as a concept. It started off as the one litre car, which yes. was a concept tandem two-seater, so one behind the other, car that Volkswagen built back in the uh, back of the turn of the last century, it's 2002, was its first sort of version. Yeah. Ultra low coefficient of drag, 
could travel a hundred kilometers on one liter on one liter of diesel <sighs> it was then revisited again in 2009 they brought out a slightly different version and the XL1 is based on that 2009 concept which wasn't a plug-in hybrid but the XL1 is yes it's got a 20 kilowatt electric motor it's got a uh, let me just put that into drive into electric mode before I go any further it's got a 20 kilowatt electric motor it's got about a 35 kilowatt diesel two-cylinder engine yep um, and claimed fuel economy on paper of one uh, sorry, it was under uh, one, I think it's 0 0.9 litres per 100 kilometres. Yeah. I drove it, and I drove it quite enthusiastically, and I drove it in electric, but I also drove it in, in diesel mode, and I got 1.1 litres per 100 kilometres. Um, I I sent that to Robert Llewellyn. Okay. Uh, I, who, this is your ongoing eco challenge between with Robert, you and Robert yeah. Llewellyn. And because yeah. I knew he was driving it today, which is Thursday, and he sent me a message this afternoon going, yo biatch, 0 0.5 litres per 100 <laughs> kilometres and I drove the same route as you. So, Robert, I take my hat off to you if I don't have my hat on. Um, but, you know, you get inside it, it's very futuristic. It reminds me a lot like the EV1 and that's because it's got a very similar design. Yeah. Drag coefficient, get this, of 0 0.189. Wow. Wow, that's... Really ultra-low drive yeah. coefficient. Um, it can drive uh, for an exceedingly long distance in coast mode. So you take your foot off the accelerator pedal and it just coasts. That's... Oh, I'd love that. It's like a freewheel mode. Um, and if you flip it into sport mode, this car has, a, it has three modes. It has EV, D for drive, yeah. which is kind of the hybrid plug-in hybrid mode where it operates with the electric motor and the diesel engine as required and then it has the S mode which is electric motor diesel as required um, the S doesn't actually increase its performance but it increases its regenerative braking capabilities when you lift off so instead of going into coast mode it regens it power. regens when you lift off very nice um, most notable features obviously it's got wheel spats fully enclosed rear wheels got yes. a boat tail so it helps that aerodynamic okay. qualities. Um, tiny little boot, big enough for my camera bag though, so okay. I mean, it's not exactly small. Um, and in terms of, you know, what's it like to drive, it's, it was actually really good fun. Quite spacious once you got inside, the doors go up. They kind of come, yeah, in, into the front, don't they? Yeah, hinge yeah. up into the front. Not, not true old fashioned gull wings, but almost. Yeah. Um, no wing mirrors. No wing mirrors at all. Which is lovely. It's got, I, from what I understand, cameras embedded in a... In the door. In the door, look, pointing backwards. Which is weird as weird as anything. Um, and the mirrors, are, the monitors are in the door as well. Okay. So you have to actually look there rather than there. So it's okay. kind of like, what, 15 degrees difference in where you have to look to find, you know, to, to see what you need to see. Um, but I found it worked very well. Surprisingly narrow as well. <coughs> Excuse me. A surprisingly narrow car, it must be said, to, dr to drive. Um, very spacious inside. I mean, I'm, I'm 5'10 and I had to pull the seat all the way forward, so I reckon it could accommodate a six-footer really easily. Okay. Um, the diesel engine was, to put it bluntly, unrefined. Okay. <laughs> when it starts up, but when it gets going, it's fine. And you can get some really decent fuel economy out of it. You know, as I, as I illustrated, 1.1 litres per 100 kilometre, uh, which wow. is, I think, I worked it out, it's two something. Uh, miles per gallon, I think. Wow, 200 um, and something. 200 and something, yeah. Its official figure is 313 miles per imperial gallon, 260 miles per US gallon. And, and it's a limited run car. They're making 250. They've already okay. made 50. They're going to make another 200. Price tag is going to be about 100,000 euros. So in pounds, that's 90,000? It's Tesla money, basically. Yeah. I mean, if, it's a car you should, if you, it's a car that if you ask the price tag, you probably can't afford it. <laughs> um, and frankly, uh, it's it's a shame that that car is being made just as this. It's as a limited a run, rich rich boy's toy, really. Yeah. I don't see any person, any person I can think of, who would buy that in preference to a Model S or a Model X. 
from Tesla, who is a plug-in fan. But I, I suppose, isn't it, isn't it more about uh, showcasing this ultra-low uh, drag technology is what they're doing? Yeah. And, and that, that's the world we're heading into, is that it's going to be energy efficiency in all types of fuel, not mm -hmm. just plug-in. Carbon fiber reinforced plastic. That's yeah. another thing. Um, and, you know, just generally uh, ultra lightweight. And you're right, I mean, it does showcase ultra lightweight technologies. It obviously uh, uh, highlights uh, Volkswagen's diesel, blue motion diesel technology. Yeah. Um, but it's too compromised as a car. It doesn't have an onboard charger. Oh yeah, I remember you telling me this. This is bizarre. And I, I did this after I'd filmed the review and I was all raving about it. And then I, <laughs> then I went, what's that on the floor? And they went, oh, that's the onboard charger. Except it's offboard. <laughs> the offboard charger. <laughs> so car like the Volt, the Leaf, the Tesla, you plug into a public charging point and it takes, the, the public charging point isn't a charger, it just delivers the power to the car, which then feeds it to its onboard charger and then the car charges its batteries using the onboard charger. On the XL1, they've taken the, the onboard charger, which they said was about 20 kilos, so what, 40 something pounds, 40, well, uh, so it's going to be 44 pounds. Okay. And they put it in this little box. Now, the connector that connects to the car looks like a Menencares Type 2 charging cable. Yeah. But if you were to plug a Type 2 charging cable into it... Nothing would happen. It would go kabooey. It, it just wouldn't deliver any power because it wouldn't know there was a... It wouldn't okay. know what to spy. It so. would go what? Yeah. You do what now? Um, so you cannot charge that car at a public charging station. If you want to, you have to take this little box. And it reminded me a little bit of, you know when the Apollo astronauts went to the moon? Yeah. And they had to carry those little boxes with their oxygen and... The, the scrubbers, were the they scrubbers, the scrubbers that yeah. they were carrying? Um, and they had to carry those. Well, that's what you have to have if you want an XL1. So it's the same, similarly futuristic so the proposal. So they've removed it to save weight, so it go. It has better fuel economy. Yeah, I mean, it but only weighs 700 and some kilos. I mean, it's 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 lighter than the original Golf Mark One Golf. But if you want to go somewhere and carry on using electricity, you've then got to take it with you anyway. And it only has a range of 30 miles an uh, electric motor, electric. or 50 50 kilometres just over 30 miles. It's an interesting choice. I can, I can, part of me can see why they did it and part of me goes that was a silly decision. But then because it's so efficient, yeah. 300 miles to the gallon. I mean this yeah. car right now, what's this get one? We've been driving this, we've got half a battery pack because we're saving 17 miles of, of electrical range until we get into London. Yeah. Since I fill, fill, filled it up, which was just before I came to pick you up because it was empty, uh, it was fully charged and I just topped it out. We've used 2.3 gallons of UK gallons of fuel to cover 127.8 miles. Yeah. We're getting an average of 53.8 miles per imperial gallon. And because this car has the ability to switch uh, between British and American uh, you units, can make that. I can make that into a, a US setup. That's very clever. That's very clever, isn't it? Didn't know it could do that. Uh, thank you, Detroit. It's the only car I've ever come across. So 44.8 US miles okay. per gallon. Yeah, so I mean, that uh, that car blows these kind of cars out of the water. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting concept. And I, I love the idea that it hints at a direction for Volkswagen, which is we might start seeing the no wing mirrors yeah. on future Volkswagens. And I, I really like the idea that we are moving to a world where even if it's not 100% battery, the plugins are becoming more and more efficient. And oh, yeah. The, and, and then it starts meaning that you can have smaller engines, carry less fuel with you. Yep. And it just, yeah, wonderful. I, I love showcasing. I'm so jealous I couldn't go. Talking about fuel, we can now turn into electric mode. Yeah. Electric all the way to Tesla now. Exactly. We've got 17 miles left. And we're not polluting London any more than it already is. Yes. Um, we thought we did that for you, Londoners. We did that for you, Londoners. <laughs> it's also because it's a nicer car to drive at lower speed in electric mode than it is in petrol mode, because the engine just keeps going, woo! <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, um, that was the XL1. Yeah. 
why don't we go and see what we're doing in the future? Future Mark and Nikki. Future Mark and Nikki. You're gonna do the, the wibbly wobbly timey wimey <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> Westfield Mall, London. I know, it's all a bit over. Before? I have been here before, but okay. not, not... It's really trendy. I'm just looking around. Apple. Yeah. Nike. Camper. Juicy I have, Couture. I have no idea what camper is. What's camper? Uh, shoes. Oh, Shoes right, okay. that are all sort of organic and shaped. Sexy and yeah. stuff. But and they a don't Tesla have toes. Model S. And a Tesla Model right S. Right behind you. Well, quite a few, in fact. Yes, I've several. Been, I've been sitting in that one playing with the thing. Have you had a drive yet? No. So you've never driven a I Tesla have Model never before. driven a Tesla Model S. You are in for such, such a treat. I'm looking forward to okay, it. Okay, so it's about 7.10, 7.20 in the evening. I don't know when Elon's due to speak, probably about 8. I would think nine. about 8, yeah. Um, you've driven here in your Leaf. In the Nissan Leaf. How did that go? I was really fine because I didn't have to come very far, like a mile. But it's parked downstairs uh, and I didn't find the electric charging bays that are open. I just right. found all the ones that have hundreds of ice cars. Yeah, so Westfield Mall doesn't Westfield Mall any... need to do something about their electric car charging policy. That's all I'd like to say. I did tweet them. Yes, and we were downstairs in a vault and we were fine. And did you find somewhere to park? We were in a different part of the park. And you've thing. been able to plug in. And we're plugged in. So our 80 miles to the gallon will now be 180 miles to the gallon at the end of the evening or something. I yeah. don't know. Okay, so um, I've got the advantage on you. I've driven the Model S before you have, and yeah. you haven't. So I I'd haven't. be really keen. Well, maybe I have to try and catch up with you when you've yeah. driven it later yeah. on. Um, earlier this week, Elon Musk was in Munich. <laughs> he did loads of announcements about yeah. things coming up. Free tuning for the Autobahn, yeah. 135 kilowatt charging stations, no. the whole shebang. Do you think there's anything that we're going to hear tonight? Well, wouldn't it be? A, I can't imagine because I mean that you know as soon as he said, I hadn't even thought of it when I watched that video of him saying that. I've got, of course, German people drive really, really fast. And they want to be able to, you know, that's what they're used to. Yeah. This car can go really, really fast, so oh, yes. why not tune it to do that? Fast but um, I can't indeed. quite imagine. And can't quite imagine. <laughs> that nice. Can't quite imagine what um, what they could do here. I mean, other. I mean, I wouldn't it be wonderful if they do put their charging network in. I don't know. I mean, I imagine they'll, they, they've got to do some What I want Tesla to do is go, okay, everyone who's got this Nissan Leaf gets a free Tesla. Well, wouldn't that yeah. be great? <laughs> I don't think he's going to be saying that. Really? No. If you've ever written anything slightly positive on a vlog about electric cars, <laughs> we'll just give you one. He hasn't given anyone. I love that about this company. Yeah, I think it's they great. haven't given anyone, the most famous people in the world. And I think that's a really... And they buy them, which is good. You know, uh, Leo DiCaprio bought two Tesla Roadsters. Yeah. He couldn't get them for free. Other people would give him cars by the yeah, dozen. Yeah. But I think actually that, that's a really important and it thing. Well, it plays it to them. Yeah. that they, they're not giving anyone any special treatment. I think yeah. that's really, really important. Very good, yeah. Oh, lovely, thank you. Thank you very much, yes. Thank you. Thank you. It's okay, it's good. <laughs> I've got a bottle of spit as well. We're going to spit on. <clears throat> it's almost as if they've never encountered filming before. <laughs> Camera, microphones. Yeah. You know. But there we are. So, um, in all honesty, I don't think we are going to have anything that's I can't that's see it's going to be, yeah. But wouldn't it be great if there's a little extra? Earlier on this year, Elon Musk said uh, original Roadster owners would be getting something special. Oh, wouldn't right. this be great if we had? Oh, so here? there might be a special. Oh, I've I'm not, I'm not expected a special announcement. Uh, maybe battery swaps for, for the UK, possibly. Or maybe, maybe uh, Elon will offer to tune the Tesla Roadster and the Tesla Model S for London traffic. So you can, so so you can go you up can go. 400 miles on a single charge. Yeah, that would be good. You know, top speed so of two. It's, so it's <laughs> tuned the other, exactly the opposite yes. of Germany. So it goes really slowly. Yes, absolutely. Flat out, seven miles an hour. But boy, can you go along where you can drive to Scotland. <laughs> Mark and I have had some real concerns about Tesla in the UK. We think that the British public is just too... Oh well, I sat in. A, I sat in a in in that car with a, with a man who works in, as he said, as he described, in the financial industry. He absolutely is 
lusting for one. Yes. He's got, he drives an electric car now. I think, I think those are, it's those are the people that they need to market to. They've got pots of money. They can buy one of these like you yeah. and I can buy a sandwich. Yeah, absolutely. And they really That's should. I nice. know, oh, now you're here. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, they don't have to sell millions. They have to sell yeah. a few thousand would be yeah, yeah. a success. So. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. We'll catch up with you later figure out what Elon says and yeah. reaction to it. It might not be today, it might be in a couple of weeks time, but uh, we're, we're interested to see what happens yeah. and where it goes from here and what it does for other electric cars in yeah. the UK because you know, uh, Tesla's presence in the US has dramatically changed yeah. the EV market yeah. uh, in the US. So no, we can only hope the same, the same thing happens here. Yeah. So fingers crossed. Thank you, Robert. Enjoy. Thank you. Hello Transport Evolved, I'm here with Richard Goldsmith who Hi. has just come back from his Tesla Model S test drive. Mm. How did you find it? Number 13. Number 13? How Unlucky did you... for some, but Unlucky. not me. Uh, it was everything I expected it to be. Excellent. It's... Everything I expected it to be, except the open road of course. Yes. We're in London, but um, no issues really. You... I felt at home straight away. Yeah. I love the, uh, the thrust. Yeah, uh, and it is more than the Ampere, I have to say. It gives it, it's got a little bit more punch oh, to it. A little bit more punch <laughs> than the um, But I tried to restrain myself and just, I love the level drive. Yeah. The fact it doesn't roll. I mean, this you expect. Yeah, yeah. If, you know, if you've learned about EVs, you expect low battery weight, no roll, you know. So that makes it for a effortless, yeah. positive drive. Um, I want to go and play with all the, the dash all, all the and I haven't done that yet. Oh, you didn't get I a don't chance. Have to keep people waiting for their test drive whilst I do it downstairs. Exactly. So I'll do that up here. But it's my first Tesla test drive. It's and my like rights of passage. You see, I, I haven't even driven a Tesla yet. I've been a passenger, but haven't driven it. How yeah. did you? Uh, is it okay. something you'd consider? Is it is it a, a definite a sort of progression model for you from the Ampere up? Oh, to very it? much so. Yes. I mean, in more ways than one. The, the, the primary way, obviously, is you don't have to ever buy petrol. Yes. And you can still do the same sort of distances. Excellent. That I would have wanted to do using petrol as a range extender. So, yeah, that's obviously point number one. The other thing is it's... Um, I had two points, didn't I? You did, that's okay, that's okay. And what did you think of the, the space on the inside? I'll ask you the space. What did you think? Do you, what was the sort of most striking feature? Well, I had to, I had to bring the seat forward a bit, because my height's in my back, not my legs. But it was comfy. Once I've worked out the controls, uh, we're going to help. The striking feature is the centre console. Of course, yeah, yeah. I love the kilowatt meter. Yeah to the side of the speed. Ah, uh, yes, so you can see what you're using and how you're using and it the directly. They've, they've added that to the 2013 yeah. Ampere in a little mini graphic, which is quite cute, but not as obvious. Not as I obvious. love the dial. Yeah. Of, of and it's the, very much it's an yeah. EV. So they so thought that one out nicely. What would you give it marks out of 10? Oh, you, you couldn't be less than 10. Couldn't be less than 10. That's couldn't absolutely 10. brilliant. It's a, it's a car I would have happily put, if I had the money, put my money down on without test driving Excellent. and bought it and it, had I done that it would have met every one of my expectations. expectations. That's absolutely wonderful. Well Nikki we're going to throw back over to you. One day, one day I will get to drive a Tesla too. <laughs> Hello everybody we're back from the future. I hope we had fun. I, I really hope we have. I'm sure we did. And I hope no one was drunk. And I hope I didn't embarrass oh, myself in front of You know what? Note to form, note to future self. Hope you remember to play Elon Musk with alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet he's a wonderful drunk. Well, no, because uh, do you not remember when he did the the Tez Live thing? Oh, yeah, Someone yeah, bought yeah. some wine on stage and he drank it, and then he started dropping all these big hints about future things for Tesla. And a tip for anyone out there: there is a Twitter user called Bored Elon Musk. <sighs> So funny. It's someone just tweeting random ideas Elon Musk has while bored. I mean, it's amazing. Absolutely it's not amazing. really Elon Musk. No, is it? <laughs> well, if it is, it's genius. <laughs> but it's just a really, really silly concepts in transportation and things like that. It's oh, brilliant. That's brilliant. Okay, so uh, I hope we had fun. I hope that we saw the Model S. Oh, I really hope we did. And I hope we saw the Model X. Oh. And I hope we found out about roads to upgrades. 
and, and UK supercharger. Supercharger rollouts. I'm also hoping that there's some stuff about upgrades to the browser, which was announced in Munich, yeah. which we didn't talk about we earlier. Don't. Chrome. Mm. Elon supporting Linux That's or good. Linux, which is great because I'm I'm. You're a big Linux geek. Of of open source and stuff. Um, and hopefully we'll have met up with some of our, our EV friends. Hopefully, yes. yes. There should be a lot there. there. Lots there. We'll have a we'll have a group photo or something at the end. Yeah. I'm stroking the gear lid, but I have no idea what I'm saying about. <laughs> uh, so um, I've annoyed. I've other stories this week. Other stories, other stories this week. week. Mitsubishi <gasps> oh, finally starts delivering the Outlander plug-in hybrid in the U. Well, in Europe. In Europe, I, I not in the UK. That's next year, but in Europe. Bless them. This car for them has just been oh I, one thing after another. I feel sorry for them. I have flip-flopped on this car a lot. Okay. But I have to say, categorically now, um, that I'm really quite pleased that the car's finally made it to market. Yeah. Because it's got 30 miles of range. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in all electric mode, which makes it the same as, as say, the Volks, uh, the, v, the Volvo V60 plug-in hybrid. Yeah. 30. They're, they're thinking about 35 grandish, I think. Okay. Interesting. I might be wrong there. That's on, on very price. good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All-wheel electric drive. Yeah. It's good. good. And I think, by the way, that 35 was was after grants, so 40 grand, I think. Okay. But all-wheel electric drive uh, can drive it up to 70 miles an hour in electric mode. Not so great. Meh. Fuel yeah. economy on the combined cycle of 150 mpg. Again, meh. Not so great. But here's where it's different. It could tow up to one and a half metric tons. Oh. It only weighs 1.8 metric tons. That's close to a sort of one-to-one -one towing ratio. Yep. That's good. And if you have a horse box, if you're a horsey sort, <laughs> or yep. you have a boat or a caravan, and you want to go, uh, you, and you want to tow, but you want to have a plug-in, that's perfect. You know, it could do your weekend trips yep. to wherever, you know, uh, your weekend trips out camping or with a horse or whatever, but it could also do your 30 mile round trip to work every day. And here's where it's different. It's got Chadamo. Yes. This car does not have Chadamo. No, it doesn't. And we stopped at a Chadamo station for about 20 minutes to get our camera sorted out and make sure that we knew what we were going to be talking about today. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it was just annoying to see this fast charger there, rapid charger there. And I know this car can do it, because I mean, if you put it in mountain mode and you try and charge it up in mountain mode, it will go back up to half full in about 20 minutes. So it. It can recharge itself. At those speeds, At yeah. those speeds, you just can't get power in externally. So the Outlander plug-in hybrid does do that, and I think that's gonna be that's gonna be a killer feature. I am really gonna bug Mitsubishi to let us have a drive, because their headquarters are bang between your house and my house. Just down the road from me. So we should definitely talk to them and try and get a quick charge, yeah. or even maybe a charged up in that, their, their car. That would be great um, fun. Rollout in the US is still delayed. Rollout yeah. in the UK is still delayed. Don't expect the cars to just come flooding onto the market because there's not that many of them. No, and then they still have supply chain issues with batteries. Still have a massive backlog of orders to but it's a start, isn't it? Yeah, and it's that's a, ultimately what we're, we're and celebrating. It, the fact that, that they made this announcement shows that those issues are becoming resolved, mm -hmm. which is great. Okay, moving on. The <laughs> Volvo. Volvo. Wireless charging. Inductive charging. Volvo announced today, actually, this morning, Thursday, that it successfully concluded a study into wireless charging. Yeah and says it's safe, which I thought was just brilliant. It's so Volvo. <laughs> I can't do a Swedish accent, so I'm not gonna try. But it's essentially, we have, we have looked at the wireless yeah. charging and we can conclude that it is safe. <laughs> and you think, great, Excellent. thanks Volvo. I, I, it, wireless charging is one of those things I flip flop on quite a lot because yeah, it, I don't find plugging in a problem. No. I really don't find plugging in a problem, but having ubiquitous wireless charging everywhere mm -hmm. would be amazing. Yep. But I, the, the middle ground of going from there's no wireless charging now to having it everywhere That's is so thing, massive. Big change. 
I, yeah, and it, I don't know if that is ever going to happen because of that. But I mean, I, I just love the idea of getting to the point where the roads are powering the cars as you're driving along. They can't give it enough power to keep you going. But if they could survive but, 10 kilowatts or even 5 kilowatts, you, it's range extension yes, through yes. the road you're driving on. Uh, but we're a long way from that at the moment. Yes, I mean, we're I very, it's, very it's proven in South Korea and they've got some, some cars in South Korea that'll do that. But, but for now, no, we're not going to see that. Um, but I think Volvo has hinted, you know, essentially, look, we're looking at this. Volvo yeah. doesn't have any all electric cars on the market yet, although it does have a really quite a large fleet of C30 electric cars, which seems Seem to be being used as Volvo's test mule platform. Yes. Yeah, you know, we just look back and see what they've they've tested with this car. They, the, the C30 electric's been around for what four years now. Yeah, something like I've that. Yeah. It in the Arctic to prove that it can cope with cold winter conditions, where it's test where it, where Volvo was testing its uh, you know triple mode heating system. Yeah. Which was a uh, an ethanol based heater. A, 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 an immersion heater based and a positive temperature coefficient heater. We've seen them use it to test the 22 kilowatt three phase charging. Yeah. We've now seen it testing the um, wireless. The wireless charging, and I wouldn't be surprised if Volvo's using it to test or test autonomous driving and any other manner of things. Yeah. Um, you know, so. They're workhorses. They are workhorses, and it's great. It's great to see Volvo being so willing to test stuff. And I think it, it bodes well for Volvo. I, it's a shame they don't have anything on the market at the moment to have, mm. but it bodes well in my mind for when they choose to enter the market, they're mm -hmm. going to enter it with a very well thought through product and hopefully mm -hmm. not just follow what everyone else is doing. Yes, 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 yes. And also I think uh, it means hopefully that when that product does come, which I hope will be soon because otherwise Volvo will miss out. Yeah. Um, You'll know the technology. It won't be. In, it won't be experimental technology. It will be. We've already tested this. Yeah. We know this works. As opposed to some automakers, naming no names, who are sensibly using early adopters as test test uh, test customers. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not sure what the speed limit is here. Oh, 60. Right. Okay. I wasn't okay. going anywhere near 60. But when you well, see a speed camera, you, you always do, oh, say that. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome again. Um, so, uh, I'm just trying to think if there's any other stories this week that we have missed. Oh, almost certainly. Almost Because certainly. we don't have it in front of us. We don't have our scripts. We but we've done very well, I think. For we've ad-libbed this. We've got nearly an hour's worth of content, so I don't know how we're going to fit in the Tesla stuff. Well, Maybe we should just do the stuff we don't Nikki need and Mark ad-lib yeah. all the way to London. We, we don't need Tesla. That could be a new show. <laughs> Nikki and Mark ad-lib. <laughs> Me and Nikki just driving places. So this week we're driving to Birmingham. And <laughs> <laughs> no. no. If you uh, want to drive to Birmingham from here, you're you're walking. Yeah, it's no. a long way. Let, let's not do that. <laughs> um, I have an and finally story. You do. I do. I, I as I mentioned on last week's show, I I finally got my hands on a copy of Grand Theft Auto V, and and regardless Yay! of what people think of Grand Theft Auto V, I'm really enjoying it from a, a writing point of view. But a writing point of view. It is. It's incredibly well written. Well written. It's very good. Um, the cars in Grand Theft Auto are based upon real life cars. They so call them different names. They call they them know. different names. Then they don't look identical, but when you're playing it, there's a car called the Coil something, which is essentially the Tesla Roadster. There is a, a Prius car type one in there, and which which is electric for a little way, and then you hear the engine kick in. It's, it's the touches are wonderful, and there's a. I think it's called the Chameleon, which everyone says is a Model S, but I'm fairly sure is actually a Karma-based oh, car. Karma, yeah. But one thing that was confirmed by an online show that I've started watching called uh, Mythbusters for Grand Theft Auto is that if you set cars on fire in, in Grand Theft Auto 5, they explode. Unless they're battery powered. Which is brilliant. Which because they catch fire and then the fire stops. No explosion. <laughs> Can you then drive them? No, no, they're then they're, they're dead cars at that point. But there's no explosion, which I think is just a very subtle. And am I right in thinking that the coil is the fastest car in Ooh, in it, the game? It'd be one of the fastest cars. I don't know if it's the fastest, um, but yeah, it's certainly up there. I managed to get my hands on one while playing the other day. <laughs> so nice and handles lovely. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. But I, I, I just thought oh, it's a lovely and finally because it's 
just a very subtle way of getting electric cars into the public consciousness yeah. and, and showing that because people will notice that it doesn't explode and and I just I feel very and good. of course Rockstar Games based in the UK based in the UK <laughs> wonderful UK games manufacturer and they do court controversy a bit but I think they're it's, wonderful. It is an 18 rated game. I don't have it yet, but after watching those myth busting videos, I, I want to try and get a gaming scenario where I, I can play games without my kids watching. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not a game to play around kids. I... Oh, look, there's a plug in Prius. Yeah. Uh, so... See, we are seeing plug in cars in the good old London town. We are getting closer to London now. Uh, the speed limit on this section of road is what I'm driving at, and everybody else is driving much faster. <laughs> I always get paranoid about... I don't speed, I'm not a speeding kind of person, generally. Um, unless I have to test out the top speed of something. Yes. Um, or you're driving a, an E6. Because you can't speed in an E6. You can't speed with Oh, the, the BYD. <laughs> sorry. We'll get brought down off the internet. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That, that slander, that is. Well... <laughs> I cut that bit, sorry. All right, well, that really is it. Uh, we'll switch the camera around so you can see the wonders of driving in London traffic, and uh, we will see you next week on Transport Evolve. Well, we'll be back on Sunday at the usual time of what, Mark? Of, of 7 o'clock won't be BST, it will be GMT. Yes. So um, that's uh, 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 an extra hour. Except it won't be because we'll all be on the same we'll thing, and I yeah. think America changes. Oh, do they change at the same uh, time same as us? Same time as us coming back, I think. Excellent. Anyway, that is it. Thanks for joining us. I hope it wasn't too boring. Uh, we will have the Tesla bit in the middle, which will probably make a separate thing anyway. Yeah. And until next time, folks, don't forget to plug in. See you soon. Bye bye. bye, -bye. You're breaking me. Please Sorry, stop. I stopped doing the Archer's theme tune. <laughs> we're, we're so childish.